Ralph's great-grandfather was Levi Nelson Countryman, a Minnesota farmer and wannabe preacher married to Alta Chamberlain. Ralph's grandfather was Theophilus R. Countryman, a surveyor of railroads and mine tunnels, who was married to Ada Jakewith. Ralph's father was Russell Countryman, an insurance man married to Muriel Kelly, who grew up near Piedmont Avenue. The house of Muriel's parents was situated on land now occupied by the Piedmont Theater and adjoining Fenton's Ice Cream. Before Ralph was born, Russell and Muriel had Walter in 1916 and Dave in 1918. And then, on a spring day in 1921, came the blessed event. All three boys went to Piedmont High School, where Dave was in the bagpipe marching band. All three boys went through Cal Berkeley, where Ralph was the editor of the yearbook, a major responsibility in those days. Then the boys lost their mother. With Walter and Ralph and friends in attendance, Ralph's brother Dave married Lorraine Louise Lindblad of Berkeley. Walter married Elvira and moved to Southern California to raise a daughter Lois and son Russell. Ralph's brother Dave moved to Stillicum Lake, south of Tacoma in Washington State, where they started to raise a big family.
In the days preceding each visit, the buzz would go around. Bachelor, handsome, officer, convertible. For such a man, we all knew the template. Hold it. I think you're going to like this picture. The go-to TV show about eligible bachelors was the Bob Cummings show. The guy looked like Ralph. Heck, both were photographers. And Bob Cummings was in the Air Force. We got to see Ralph so infrequently that we began to imagine among ourselves a sort of mythology about him. Maple flavored. Maple. I wonder who's sleeping in the living room. That's Uncle Ralph. Wake up, you old Ralph Spike. <laughs> you want to play this, please? Oh, Marky, you no, know, it's, it's much too early. Not too breakfast time. <laughs> what do you like for breakfast? Go to your room and play, Marky. Uncle Ralph. Say mm. hello to Uncle Ralph. Yeah. Ralph was, to a fault, a gracious host. But in later years, when an onslaught of nephews and nieces would come to visit, we couldn't help but get the feeling that he might also have had another existence, more genteel and private. I don't have time to cook. Hey, Bob, my guests are coming in five minutes. It only takes minutes. Mind her. Jenny, will you be good? You won't make a mess? No. Here comes your maple. Say ta-ta. Ta-ta. No. As the years wore on and Ralph got less and less able to get around on his own, he was indeed fortunate to have a lot of folks who would pitch in to help him. Across the street were Bruce and Haiti. Especially helpful were Joan Wilson and Don Wilson. When Ralph's health was at its most fragile, Nathan stepped in time and again. Bob was there for him, way above and beyond the call of duty. Most attentive and steadfast of all was Teresa. We all have her to thank for Ralph having those extra years. Honorable mention in the helpers department goes